It's fair to say that Iceland's volcanoes have been in the news lately. So, on our recent trip to Reykjavik, we decided to do a day trip to the Reykjanes Peninsula, where some of the active volcanoes are, to learn a bit more about the recent eruptions. It was rather chaotic. We are out in the elements here. It is windy, it is rainy, there's lava everywhere. But it was an interesting afternoon out. Here's the full lowdown of what a volcano hiking tour in Iceland is like in 2024. Today we are off on a bit of a different afternoon trip. We've both been to Iceland before and we've done the Golden Circle, etc. And we wanted to do something that wasn't too far from the city because we didn't want to do a really, really long day trip. And also just something a little bit different. So we're actually going on a volcano hiking tour. Obviously, Icelandic volcanoes have been in the news a lot recently. We're not going near the one that recently erupted. That one you can't go to at the moment. But we are going to some lava fields of ones that have erupted over the past couple of years. It seems very safe. I'm sure they wouldn't be running the tour if it wasn't safe but I'm not too sure what to expect so I'm gonna video it I'll show you what it's like to visit a uh, volcano historic volcano eruption site in Iceland and hopefully we'll learn a lot more about volcanoes along the way I've got my day pack here it is loaded up with snacks I just went to bonus which is one of the cheaper Icelandic supermarkets another warmer layer just in case my camera gear my water which I just need to fill up I also have my swimsuit because there is an optional stop at a lagoon if we have time so yeah, maybe we'll get a little uh, another little hot springs in as well <laughs> So we are on our way to the volcano, but our driver spotted a whale So now we're all walking towards the sea to see if we can see this whale when in Iceland, I guess The weird creatures actually, they tend to be much larger than, than toothed whales, dolphins and such Well, the sperm whale is actually an outlier from, from the tooth whales It's large and the uh, similar in size to the to the humpback amazing so just out from Reykjavik we saw a whale and some seals but now we do have a volcano to hike up so let's go after that we have had a series of uh, eruptions in that area and then of course we have a new area now closer to the blue lagoon uh, closer to this town of Grindavik we are not allowed to be, go there but we will still see uh, over that area from where we are walking. So we have arrived on the Reykjanes Peninsula. We're very, very, very close to Grindavik, which is the town that's been evacuated, but it's close. You can see the road closure. So I guess at this point is safe. Further on, it's not safe. We are hiking up from here. They track all the volcanoes every single day. And the only one that has shown any signs of erupting soon is the one by Grindavik. So these volcanoes are definitely not going to erupt anytime soon. But we're going to have a little hike up. We're going to see some lava and hopefully get some good views. This was a volcanic eruption that lasted for in the period for eight months. Now in uh, July, last last year, July, we had an uh, eruption up here. weather has abated ever so slightly it's still very windy but the rain seems to have stopped for now but everything is wet my feet are soaked my legs are soaked my gloves are soaked <laughs> full-on waterproofs would have been a good idea so we're currently walking through a lava field and you can see there's so much lava here and we're walking towards the crater we were told that the crater is just over there it's not far away but we can't see it because of the <laughs> because of the weather <laughs> welcome to Iceland This is a lava rock. They are very light rocks because they're filled with so much air. Oh, the sun's coming out of it now. Hopefully I dry off a little bit. It's actually quite mild. I think it's about six or seven degrees, which for Iceland in winter is fairly warm. I don't think I explained earlier, we're at the Fjall volcano and this one erupted in 2021, 2022, 2023. It's not the one that's currently erupting, which is a different 
volcano chain but it is very close by so it is very much a evolving changing landscape yeah it's a it's an interesting time to be on the reckoning peninsula and you know it's scary in a lot of ways but we're not there's no like imminent danger right here so i think hikers in the last like a few months ago did see actual like lava we can sort of see lava stones and stuff here but no actual flowing lava so this tour starts at 11 a.m and it ends in, at 6 p.m and there's no lunch stop so you are advised to take your lunch with you we did stop somewhere for the time we could have bought some lunch there if we wanted but we're sort of at our lunch stop now which is definitely a lunch stop with a view <laughs> heading back to the coach now it's a bit less exposed down here it's still the wind is still quite chilly and I'm still very very damp but I do feel a little bit warmer so that's good that was incredible and just seeing the lava up close seeing the views and just yeah seeing like so many people on the news so much and then just seeing it in person like nothing compared to seeing it in person but really felt the full force of the Icelandic element which is to be expected we are on an island in the north of the Atlantic Ocean We are back at the bus now, but just to know, we are literally right where it's closed. So this is where the road is closed and that road goes to Grindavik, which is where the eruption volcano is by. So we are allowed here, but we're very, very close to where is off limits at the moment. On another note, there's obviously no toilets on the hike and there's also nowhere on the hike where as a girl you can hide and go to the toilet. So I just had to find a very large rock in the car park, which is why I saw that sign. I'm guessing this is really out of date now, but there was a sign saying, come to Grindavik after your hike and um, have some food at such and such place. But obviously, sadly, I'm sure that is not the case at the moment. And yeah, sadly, Hopefully people will be able to go back home at some point. So the Reykjanes Peninsula has volcanoes, but that is not all it has. We are at the Seton Geothermal Area, where there is lots of geothermal waters. You can see it all bubbling away and it smells very eggy. The short but sweet little stop. There are so many of these like geothermal areas in Iceland. They are really amazing, but it's just so casual how they're just off the side of the road. Another stop on the way back, we have Kleifavatan Lake behind me which is the largest lake on the peninsula. It is eight kilometers squared. And it's, I do think this is a pretty nice viewpoint. And the first thing he says in the trailer is I'm Thor Odinson. I'm very happy to report that we are back and I'm wearing dry clothes. <laughs> No, that was a very good hike. I really enjoyed going up, seeing the lava, well, the dried lava, the lava rocks, and seeing all the scenery. The scenery was spectacular as well, and it was nice seeing an area of Iceland that you don't really hear about very much, unless it's in the news because of eruptions, but um, it's not somewhere that you hear much about tourist-wise, and it felt very, very safe. The So these eruptions were last, the last time this chain of volcanoes erupted was last year and like six months ago or so people could actually see real lava flowing still and they were still running tours then but today there wasn't any real lava flowing or anything like that but it was still very interesting to see the lava fields and to learn about volcanic eruptions as well and just about how Icelandic people have to live with them because they do you know that's a part of life here obviously it's very topical at the moment and it's very very sad for the people in Grindavik who've had to leave their homes and they don't know when or even if they'll be able to go back and obviously people hope that it won't affect any other towns or cities in Iceland could it affect Reykjavik I don't know 
I don't think the scientists know. There are some towns much closer to Grindavik and the volcanoes as well. So yeah, who knows really? Um, it is very, it's a very sobering thought, definitely. But yeah, it was all very interesting and it's definitely given me more of a understanding as to how these volcanoes work and more of an appreciation to the Icelandic people for learning to live and adapt to climates where they just they just have to live with them. So it was very interesting. The tour was very big, there were a lot of people and considering we were all hiking together, that was a little bit manic. But the guides were very, very good. So we had a guide and a driver, but the driver sort of stayed with us and sort of guided us as well. And they were both very, very good. The driver especially was hilarious. Yeah, generally a really good tour. It was nice to have another couple of extra stops too. It's very interesting with the volcano because we actually canceled a trip to Iceland in November and we postponed it to now obviously the volcano went off like a week before we were due to land but we didn't actually feel the need to cancel it then because it had already happened a few times and i felt like people knew what they were dealing with a little bit more then i mean we would have been fine in november but i felt like what we felt at least was that there was so much uncertainty then but it's interesting coming to iceland and honestly Life is normal, apart from in Grindavik, obviously, and obviously people are not living there at the moment. But other than that, the Blue Lagoon is open again, and they've, they've just changed the rerouting uh, to it, so that's all open. Reykjavik is completely normal, flying is completely normal. You'll, ha you'll be able to chat to people about it, about what's going on, but honestly, you could easily come here and not even hear anything about it so if you're planning a trip to iceland or if you're worried about coming to iceland at the moment honestly things are normal and the people here the locals here know what they're doing when it comes to volcanoes so i really wouldn't worry about that or let it hamper your trip plans at all actually we went right up to where the volcanoes were and i didn't feel like there was any kind of issue with the volcanoes it was just the weather it was just not being prepared enough for the weather not i was wearing my running leggings and i should have been wearing waterproof trousers it wasn't cold but i got wet and then it was so windy so yeah that was that was the the issue not anything to do with actually being by the volcano i think yeah i think that's the good thing whether whether you're with a tour guide or whether you're following tourist board information or the, volca the volcanologist information, people here really do know what they're doing. So as long as you follow all of those procedures, um, I'd recommend if you're going to the Reconaise, 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 don't know how to pronounce it. But if you go into that peninsula, I recommend going with a guide at the moment, just because they know what they're doing, they know about closures, etc. And that's what we did. If you want to book this trip, you can uh, take a look in my description and there will be a link there. It will be an affiliate link, so I get a small commission if you purchase it. But if you don't want to actually hike up a volcano, you can go to the lava show in Reykjavik. And this is an indoor lava show where you see lava, lava's like poured into the room and you sort of see how it interacts with different elements and it is very interesting we did that last night so i do recommend doing that as well so that just about wraps that up thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time Bye.